Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Jared Polly's Fragrance Reviews. Tonight, I am extremely excited to be talking about my most recent acquisition of my vintage fragrances. It's not a big bottle, but it's a very special bottle. This fragrance is Jean Patou Pour Homme. This is a vintage bottle from 1980. You can see the JP on the top. This is a splash bottle. This is a 15 milliliter bottle, which I have been looking for for a long period of time. So I would just like to say one thing. I would like to thank my great buddy, Daryl, who hunts down all my vintage fragrances for me because he went out of his way to get this one for me. And Daryl, I really appreciate all your time and effort and how you helped me finding these fragrances. Thank you so much. It means so much to me. So this fragrance to many is considered the masterpiece of all masterpieces. And my buddy Vic from Bel Air Scents was one that really cemented in my head how good this fragrance was and intrigued me. I had heard of it before, but I did not realize that some people actually considered it the greatest fragrance in the history of, of perfumery for men. My first encounter with this fragrance was I heard that Don Johnson, the famous um, uh, actor from the television show Miami Vice had worn it in the show which is true and that also added a lot of intrigue to me because Miami Vice is my favorite television show of all time and in the 80s it was the most influential show in terms of hairstyles, sunglasses, clothing, cars. Uh, Don Johnson ruled uh, the 80s with his style and so did uh, Philip Michael Thomas, the, his uh, co-star. So this has great significance, this fragrance. So this fragrance also, in 2013, was re-released in Jean Patou's Heritage Collection. So these fragrances are not similar at all. I have not smelt the Heritage uh, fragrance, the Heritage version of this. But I can just tell you a few notes that... Um, in the actual note breakdown, there are the notes of clary, sage, basil, pimento seeds, vetiver, geranium, fir, cedar, civet, vanilla, tonka bean, sandalwood, labdanum. All of those notes, and there are other notes in this one, are in this fragrance, but not in the heritage version. So they are completely different. And this one, I think, is more leathery is more musky, more earthy, more vanilla. So that I think they would be two very different uh, scents indeed. So I am just going to splash a little bit. It's got a little on my skin. Don't want to waste too much. So the first thing I would say about this fragrance, probably more so than any other fragrance I've ever smelled, it has an absolutely devastating, potent opening like no other, but in a very good manner. It's extremely animalic, oily, spicy, herbal. It's, it's so well-rounded right off the top. And it has this earthiness that isn't kind of um, too soil-like. It, it has pop to it. It has life to it. It's very vibrant. It's very addictive. As it starts to dry down, the fragrance starts to uh, develop a little more uh, woody, it smooths out a little bit softer. I get some like a pine notes, pine woody notes. The other thing that happens, I find with the bottle I have, it becomes, it pulls away from the skin and projects more around you. And you can notice the, the wafts in the air. And it just, it always seems to be evolving and changing from hour to hour. And this is the complexity of this fragrance, I think is what makes it so great. Throughout the whole fragrance, you always have this, this undertone, this backbone of animalic notes. And, but later on, you get, it becomes a little more leathery, a little more, a little more vanilla you start to, to uh, smell in the scent. Overall, I would say that what makes this fragrance so great is its continual development over the hours. And it's so well-rounded. It, it seems to have all the good qualities of her fragrance in one. And it's something that is very masculine. It's definitely not going to be for everyone, especially 
uh, people that are not into vintage fragrances or have not smelled any fragrances from the 80s, it could be kind of a shock. You could be off put by the smell. It is an incredi incredibly brilliant. It's a beautiful smell. It's something that should be uh, appreciated. And people say, well, they should bring this fragrance back. I disagree. Because the value of something is only, you only know it when it's gone. And when you smell this fragrance against what is out there today, you realize how great this is. And I would say that, you know, in today's fragrance world, there's nothing can match something like this. And I would say this one, along with Fahrenheit, are my, would be my two favorite fragrances. I have to renew another vintage one that I bought some time ago that is very special. I'll be reviewing that as a, at a later date. But I would still say for me personally, I would say Fahrenheit is a little more groundbreaking. But this is more well-rounded, maybe a little bit more complex. But there's something, and that's just a personal taste that I like Fahrenheit more. But this is an extremely great uh, fragrance. There are a couple notes in here that I just want to mention. The first one is Civet which is a musky amber animalic scent. And this actually comes from the anal glands of an exotic civet cat. It's now synthetic, so they don't have to, I guess, kill the animal anymore, but it, sell, it smells very pungent. It gives incredible warmth and radiance to a fragrance and it's the animalic note. And I think this is something, the animalic note was something that was very prevalent in the 80s fragrances and that is lacking in many of the fragrances today. And there's something, and they don't have that masculine appeal to fragrances that are being produced now. And the ones in the 80s and 70s did. Um, the other note is labdanum, which is part of the resin balsam family. And that gives a fragrance a very deep, powerful, a leathery, ambery note. I should also mention that I have found four different sets of notes for the original Jean Patou Pour Home. So... There are other notes that I have come across that are not listed in the list that I found. So I, I'm not really sure. Unless you actually got the set of notes from Jean Patou at that time, I think there could be a little bit of discrepancy in between uh, the notes that are, that are out there. Final thoughts on this scent. I would say this is an otherworldly scent in terms of its sophistication, how well-rounded how brilliant it is, and it checks off all the boxes. This is a masterpiece. There's no doubt about it. And I, I could, when people say it's the greatest fragr fragrance, male fragrance of all time, I can't say that it isn't. It's definitely one of, the, one of the greatest. And whether you consider it the greatest, that's a matter of your personal taste. Some people may not like it at all. I personally love it. This is, this is my type of fragrance that I think this is what a perfumery should be in the gentleman line. And all around, I would say that this would be uh, a 10 out of 10. I don't see any real weak points in it because I wore this one today. It's got great performance. It's still, I still can pick it up. I put a little bit on my clothes. It smells beautiful playing off, uh, off my undershirt, my turtleneck. So I would say... Lastly, if you ever can find something like this, it's going to cost you a lot. So that's only a decision you can make. And I think you have to be a vintage hunter or this has to be something you've worn in the past. And uh, some, or you have that extra money to spend because it's, it's a big investment. So if you liked this video, hit the like button, the subscribe button, notification bell. Any comments, questions, or experiences you have with this fragrance, leave it down below, and I'll always answer you back. Thank you for your time, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.